Hello, and welcome to our episode. Ah, Todd talks when Todd talks, people listen. Persona, I am thou, and thou art I. Hopefully. Yes, I know it seems like we just got back. It's been great that we are back. We are so back. But now it's time for episode two of four of the, what do you want to call it, the 2024 Quartet? The Return to Death Battle Tour, <laughs> I guess. Because today we are talking about Joker from Persona 5 versus Giorno Giovanna from JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, part five. The numbers. They just, they just go together like this. This is clearly why the, this is the matchup, because it's two characters from the fives. I'm just saying. Ah, uh, yes, this is going to be a fun one for various reasons. So since there's going to be a lot of complicated nonsense, it's JoJo and Persona after all. Uh, let's just dive into it, shall we? Ren Amamiya, a.k.a. Akira to some of you. I'm kind of glad it's Ren, because Akira is just... It's overused, let's be honest here. Come on, it's overused, you know it. Ren Amami was your def your typical textbook average young man. He just was. He was an average guy who is the embodiment of no good deed goes unpunished. Because one day he found a drunk dude trying to force himself onto a woman, ran interfered, injured the guy, the guy got ticked, police got involved, and oh by the way, he just happened to be like one of the most popular uh, uh sorry, powerful and popular politicians in all of Japan. Oops. So, Ren was blamed for everything. The politician got nothing on him. Politics. The woman disappeared so she couldn't tell the truth. And thus, Ren Amamiya became a delinquent slash criminal. Oops. And thus, because of this, he was ostracized from his own community. And his own parents, because of what happened, sent him away to Café La Blanc where he would remain for the rest of his days in social solitude, not being able to do anything to change the world. Don't you wish, Mr. Shido. <laughs> yes, because as it so happens, his rebellion, him being, him being a prisoner of fate, led him to the Velvet Room, where a certain person named Igor, if you know, you know, uh, revealed to him that he was yet another person with the blessings of the wild card, or the fool. And this allowed him to not only have the potential to change his own fate, or as he, uh, Igor put it, his rehabilitation, and change the world, but also affect the lives of so many others and fix everything that had happened. To do this, he would soon meet up with many, many, many people and would form a group known as the Phantom Thieves. But what are these thieves stealing? Well, this is where things get wacky. Because, uh, as if this wasn't wacky enough. Uh, as it so happens, there is a place called the Metaverse. I'm not going to dive into the, the deep metaphorical and, and uh, philosophical methods of it. Just think of it as an alternate world where the consciousness and unconsciousness come together to create something different. Like a true imaginary world, but where your subconscious lives in it and exudes everything that you are and that you think of the world. So, for example, in the first heist that the Phantom Thieves had with uh, Joker, which I will call him now from now on, uh, Joker, Ryuji, and On, not Anne, On, they went into the palace, mind palace, of a certain jerk PE teacher he used to be a star athlete and he felt he was a king where everyone was to be his slave and any female Q underage female uh, was to be basically his I how do I put this delicately plaything there you go it they go they go really hard in persona 5 <laughs> really quickly but uh, that's just one of the many 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 people and uh, palaces that they go into and their goal is to steal the treasure that will uh, when brought into the real world will force that person like such as that teacher to change their ways admit what they've done and understand just how wrong what they did was so in this case the teacher confessed in front of an assembly full of people that he had abused his students mainly the female students he had terrorized others and he lied and done other things because of the power he felt he had 
And so with this and the knowledge that they could go into the metaverse uh, via their phones, don't ask, and uh, mementos, they were able to go figure out how to steal these seven deadly sins, as we would find out, and try and change the world. And the good news is they were able to do that. The bad news is it was anything but easy. And that's why they had their, a little bit of help with their personas. Now, the personas are... I don't even want to go into it because... <laughs> Okay, because then, you, then we get into Shinigami Tensei kind of stuff, and yes, that does. Uh, it, Persona is a spinoff of Shinigami Tensei, but let's just let's just say that they are manifestations of willpower and certain other personality traits that allow them to fight back against fate. And they are the they embody the personas embody various characters, beings, and gods of our reality and uh, the various mythologies from all over the world. For example. And just in this preview that I'm going to be talking about right now, there are references to legendary thieves. There are uh, uh, various uh, mythical creatures like pixies and Cerberuses. There are the gods like Thor, Loki, Lucifer, and so on. And then there are even ones of Cthulhu mythology. All mythologies are on the table in Shimigami Tensei and Persona, and Persona. So it just depends on who you are and what you're able to have. And that brings us all the way back to Joker. Because Joker, as the wild card, has the ability to have multiple personas under his command. Now, in the canon, or sorry, in the game, he can have, after leveling up, about 12. You actually start off with like one with who is Arsene, Lupin Arsene. And uh, then he gets, you know, two, then three, then four as he levels up. And eventually he gets to 12, which is a, a reference to the number of tarot cards in the, uh, in the persona deck. Don't ask me to remember them all. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Fool, Lovers, Chariot, Hanged Man, Moon, Sun, Tower. I forget the rest. Uh, <laughs> is Architect one of them? No, I don't think Architect one of them. Anyway, there's 12. And so you can have 12 in, in, at a time. And you can fuse, you can find, you can just really fight one and get it to your side, etc., etc. And But in the gl Grand Glossary... That is Persona 5 Royal. I made sure to look this up. And it said, remember I said Royal, not just the main, the original game. This is the extended version because we got to talk about that. Uh, there are 259 Personas that Joker can wield. And this is important for numerous reasons. First of all, variety. Much like any uh, Gotta Catch Them All compendium, you have various elements that are... Uh, used by these various creatures. So fire, your typical fire, ice, lightning, wind, light, dark, nuclear, because reasons. Um, physical, there's multiple types of physicals. There's there's like hard physical, there's slashing damage, there's piercing damage. Uh, it's like bullets are piercing, uh, punches are physical, and like scythes are cutting damage, that kind of thing. So you have, uh, the different personas you have have those wide array abilities, and it's some, uh, uh, personas like, say, Loki, who was always a favorite of mine in P5R and P3R, um, he, he, they can wield multiple elements at once, giving you a better edge over opponents. But it's not just that. They also have more subtle abilities. For example, they can uh, reflect physical damage. They can reflect magical damage. They can absorb certain kinds of things. So uh, a, a persona that has wind elemental, for example, can sometimes have an ability that allows you to either completely cancel out any wind damage or absorb it so that it actually gives you health. We see that all the time in the in the games. So uh, that's a neat that's a neat trick to have. You can also have one to have higher resistances to certain things while also having weaknesses to other things you might not expect, which is why having a good persona party is so important. But this goes even further because with Joker, not just through his ability to wield multiple personas and, and collect them <laughs> like candy, he can power them up because he gets special cards that allow him to either bestow special abilities onto basically any persona he wants or within his collection. But he can power them up one card at a time. So, you know, increasing their strength, increasing their resistance, increasing their magical ability, etc., etc., to the point where he can max them out to 99. All right. And yes, there are, it is a much like with, say, Dark Souls and uh, uh, Skyrim. It is possible you just got to grind, and so you can do it. And there, I've seen the pictures, and I actually have a friend of mine on the podcast that I do 
And he's like, hey, Todd, you're, are you min-maxing your skills so you can, like, you know, boost this and boost that? And I'm like, no. <laughs> I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that at all. So, as a result, Joker has a wide, wide, wide array of abilities that he can use through these personas, whether he channels it all through Arsene, or through the ones he collects, or fuses, or whatever. And their powers can attack one enemy, attack multiple enemies, they can inflict sorry, status effects, can heal him, can restore, uh, uh, he, sorry, nullify him, no, sorry, I gotta say this correctly, can nullify certain effects, or heal him from certain status effects. So, like I say, if someone wants to, like, put him to sleep, they can use a special attack or a special ability to recover him from that. Or if someone lowers his attack, they can rebuff it or even just buff him higher. And there are even some personas, which are across multiple games, where if the character dies while a certain persona is attached, instant revive. Not only works once for, per persona per fight, but it's still an incredibly useful ability. I speak from experience on that one. So, throughout their, their journey, the Persona, sorry, the Phantom Thieves went through seven different dungeons uh, in trying to deal damage to either bad people or, in the case of Futaba, uh, heal her from the crippling I don't, mental prison, I guess I should say. The me yeah, the crippling mental prison that she put herself in. She, was in a, she had a tomb in her mind, basically. And throughout each step, they learned that just how screwed up this world was because they found out that the politician that they had, that a Joker had accidentally ticked off, was actually the one behind a whole bunch of deaths and incidents that, incidents that led to him rights to power, and him trying to take over all of Japan so he could unify them under one corrupt party where he could use their various their own mind palaces, regardless of whether they realized or not, and literally just shut down their minds and control them like sheep. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, so naturally they had to do that and stop that, and they did, but then they found out that there was this thing called mementos where they had to go deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper, and that's where they found out that things were even more screwed up than they thought because uh, there was a dark god in there called, I'm going to say, botch the name so I apologize, Yalabayoth, Yalabayoth, and it determined in its godly uh, power that humanity just wasn't up for a living. It wasn't worthy. So it decided to merge Mementos with the real world, which it did, affecting pretty much everybody, except the Phantom Thieves, naturally. They were able to fight Elabaoth, and even though they weren't able to kill it initially, the power of Tokyo itself, through their actions, and then realizing... I'm, I'm skipping through a lot of story. It's a 110-hour game, ladies and gentlemen. I'm skipping through a lot of story. Uh, they were able to... The people of Japan were able to fuel the Phantom Thieves, and able to help them defy their fate, which led to Joker summoning Satanael, I know I'm probably butchering that name too, Satanael, who delivered one last cursed uh, sin shell and literally put a bullet through God's head. <laughs> and was able to finally restore the world happily ever ever. Happily ever after. Or was it? Because if you got Persona 5 Royal, you got the expanded story where we had to deal with yet another god. This one controlled by Dr. Maruki, who used the power of Azazoth. That one's actually easy to say. Uh, and then Adam, his evolved form. I'm not going to say, I can't remember the last one. It was like Conro Con Con or something like that. It's Adam K or something. Uh, but yes, his evolved form is Adam. And he, that dark god, who was actually a Cthulhu god. <laughs> Believe it or not, it was the blind idiot god of Cthulhu mythology. Uh, look it up. And it was the one, it rewrote reality entirely. And I mean, like, on a fundamental level to where people who were dead were back to life. People who had certain misfortunes never had them anymore. And everyone was living a happy life except for Joker because he realized that something was very wrong here. And through teaming up with Akechi... I'm not going there. <laughs> I'm not. Don't don't you dare. Uh, he was able to rally the other Phantom Thieves, real, make them realize that something was very, very wrong with the reality, and then they fought this other god and were eventually able to bring it down, restoring reality to its uh, final, final true state. And after being eventually cleared of all charges, because remember, Joker was still a criminal, especially after becoming a Phantom Thief, Joker was able to return home, and the Phantom Thieves even helped him get away from the authorities, 
and he lived happily ever after, except there was Persona 5 Strikers, and there was a whole bunch of other content that I'm not going to get into. But he was able to finally live his life and prove that you can defy your fate if you're willing to build the bonds, to keep pushing forward, and never give up. You know, your typical JRPG thing. So, if you are one of the targets of the Phantom Thieves, you'll never see it coming. Actually, except you do, because they give you the note. Let's just move on. We now move on to Jojo's Bizarre Adventure, part five, where we will talk about Giorno Giovanna, except that's actually not his name. That was actually a name he took after he moved to Italy when his mother married his stepfather. That, yeah, let's just keep going. So he is indeed the uh, illegitimate son of Dio, who we all know about, and Jonathan Joestar, who we also know about. So thus he is a Jojo. Anime. Anime. So, uh, growing up, he was, well, he didn't have a good childhood. His mother didn't want him and actually hated him for affecting her party life. Mean. His Dio was nowhere to be found. Um, though he did have a picture of him for whatever weird reason. Again, anime. And then his stepfather, his Italian stepfather, was very abusive to him, bullied him constantly, and actually fueled some of the things that he actually hated about Dio in the first place. So, how's that for an endless loop? Hmm. Endless loop. Foreshadowing. So, as time went on, he uh, tried to live his life, which was not easy, until he found an injured man uh, in an alleyway. And when some other men approached to see if he had found him, he lied and actually unintentionally used his stand for the first time to save this man. And as it would turn out, this man was a gangster who was so indebted to Giorno that, like I was saying this with an accent, Giorno. It's Giorno Giovanna. Ha 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 ha. mother. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm having fun today. This is, this is nice. I like I like doing my PG videos. But uh, he he the gangster were rewarded Jorna by helping his life in, every, in any way he could and showing him true kindness. And it's through this that Jorna realized that, you know what? Hey, maybe being a gangster isn't a bad thing if it's used in the proper way. Okay. So he decided to not just become a gangster, but become a gangsta. Sorry. Double R in this universe, everybody. Uh, <laughs> These are practice their JoJo poses. Mm, what a great show. <laughs> but uh, uh, he decided to become a gang star and work his way through the Passione crime family, which, of course, is full of assassins and other very mean people. I mean, gosh dang it, one of his initiations was actually drinking a cup full of urine and... Yeah. <laughs> so... Uh, as he worked his way through the through the realms of, and I know we're going to talk about the stand, I promise I will, but uh, as Giorno worked his way through the ranks, he's not only unlocked further and further levels to his power, but further showed his willingness to do what was necessary to get the job done, even if it meant sacrificing himself over and over and over and over again to do it. Like one, His tried and true battle technique, if you can even call it that, is putting his own body at risk to get an advantage over an opponent. Um, I'm trying to think. I know we there was a Death Battle character that had that kind of uh, notion, but basically if he has to get stabbed to get an advantage over an opponent, he's going to do that. One time his uh, uh, body was actually infected by another stand which had lost its host called the Notorious B.I.G. <laughs> Curse you, Jojo. Um... And uh, he actually cut off his own arms because they were infected with the notorious B.I.G. And then uh, were, was willing to uh, just let them fall off of a plane <laughs> so that he, the, the stand would be locked within his arms at the bottom of the ocean. Anime. And, uh, but he's done this more times than not. He actually, actually infected once with a virus that, allowed, uh, that should have killed him, but his stand, which I'll get to, healed him in such a way that it wouldn't affect it affected him, but it would have totally killed he, he, the other people in his group. And that was another thing about this, was that over time, he not only gained the trust of the various members of the Passione, um, he actually, if I read this correctly, it was a lot to read, uh, he actually turned against the boss that he was trying to to save, and then actually didn't, because, I, it, yeah, it's, it's complicated. It's complicated, but he did, he did save the boss's daughter, Trish, 
and she was very grateful to him. And her stand is Spice Girl. <laughs> I love the music references. I do. I've never seen this series, but she's like, yeah, we're just gonna, we're just gonna do all the all the music references we can. I mean, my God, Aria Speedwagon, everybody. Um, <laughs> to start platinum. Uh, but yeah, he worked his way through the ranks and continually defeated the various enemies of the group, including eventually having to get an arrow, which you all know is important, and keep it safe so that other stand users couldn't use it, gain more power, then overthrow the boss, etc., etc. And eventually, sure enough, he was able to get to uh, get meet the boss, show show him his true place. Uh, like Giona's true place within it and recreate the Passiona into a good group that did right by the people and so he did get do did indeed get to be a gangsta. Yeah, good good stuff. Now of course we gotta talk about the stand because his stand is gold experience. Love it. And gold experience as as I noted in the preview today was that it can it can fill inanimate objects with uh, golden life energy, basically creating organic from the inorganic. And he can use this in just about any way he imagines. And I do mean that literally, okay? Because as we saw just the preview, he was able to turn a tooth into thing like a fly or uh, a jellyfish to suck out the, the urine so he could drink it. Uh, anime. He was... Uh, able to turn a bullet into actual living matter so that it would actually heal a wound that was put through someone's head. <laughs> okay. He turned a brick into a snake, which stayed like a brick in its body, but it got like the head of the tail of the snake so that it could follow somebody and track it down because reasons. Um, he was, I remember when I said that he got affected by a, a virus once? Well, that was true. And the reason he survived that was that he used gold experience to create antibodies within his own body to fight off the virus. Dang creative. And of course, he could heal himself, and which is how he survived all of his wounds. Because, I mean, my God, he like, chops off his own arms and he's, he's like, okay, this is fine. I can heal or whatever. Um, and then, uh, when things could not get even any wilder, there was Gold Experience Requiem. Yes, the arrow that I referenced before is what most people use to unlock a stand within them. Now, because Jorno was a Jojo and a Dio, sorry, a Brando, uh, it was me, Dio, uh, he already had a stand in Gold Experience. But if you use the arrow on a stand, you can become an even, like an evolved form, you know, like a Pokemon. He got an evolved form, and that evolved form was Gold Experience Requiem. And this is where things get very weird because Gold Experience outside of the standard, okay, enhanced version, I'll say standard because I don't get the wrong impression. The enhanced version of the Golden Life Energy, he has two abilities that allow it to be arguably one of the most powerful stands in the entire history of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, which is nuts to think about when you consider Star Platinum and the world. Oh, I'm sorry. Star Platinum and the world! Busting out all the catchphrases today. I'm on fire. Um, is there a fire catchphrase I should use? No. Um, so the, the two we obviously got to talk about uh, is Return to Zero and the Death Loop. And I know I know that's not the, the, the real name, but it's... Uh, it's basically an infinity loop. So if gold, gold experience requiem kills somebody, they are put on an endless death loop where they will die, then go right back to the start or the zero, and experience the death over and over and over again. It's it's basically like the most cruelest form of punishment, which he, they actually did to the uh, the anim, the main enemy at the end, G Giovolo or something like that. And, uh, yeah, you are basically trapped in an infinite death loop where you live, die, live, die, live, die, live, die, and you can't break out of it, or so they say. The one we really need to talk about is called Return to Zero, and I gotta be very specific about this because this will affect the outcome in certain ways. Or, I'm gonna revise that. They, this could affect the outcome in certain ways, all right? So, Return to Zero is basically a causality ability. What I mean by that is that uh, Goal Experience Requiem is able to remove the effect from the cause, basically undoing just about anything that is put to it. For example, 
if a bullet is shot, it will remove the effect so that the bullet doesn't doesn't and cannot do damage onto its intended target. Or in the case of the fight with Giovolo, he it, his uh, stand Crimson Red, well no sorry King Crimson sorry King Crimson was able to erase time, and Gold Experience Requiem was just like no and restore time to how it was because the effect was taken away. Basically, it nullified any ability before it was even used. Or as the wiki nicely puts it, it's a control Z. It's a complete undo of what you just did. So it, it, that is literally defined as a causality kind of thing to where it's you are affecting an entity on such a level that it just completely nullifies what you did. So a bullet wouldn't just not hurt you. It technically wouldn't even fire. It's weird. So... You can understand why a lot of people are interested in this matchup because it's about a being with so many abilities versus a being with two abilities that really can f no three abilities that really f you over. So, but going back to Giorno, with his power, he was able to do everything he, he do what he wanted, become a gang star, and be a much better person than one of his fathers was. Because remember, technically he has two, um, and Gio and Jojo. So. He earned the respect of his peers, the adoration of others, and was able to be someone who actually be a better part of the world. And that's pretty cool. And no, it wasn't you, Dio. It was Gio Gio. <laughs> All right. Let's get into it. Because, like I said, this is a battle between the many versus the limited but powerful. So who wins in this fight? So what this is really going to boil down to, as we saw with Omnidoc, because I'm trying not to make that mistake again, is this is a battle of interpretation. And I really don't even think it has to do with the infinite death loop, because I do actually think that, uh, that Joker could get out of that because of some of the personas he has. What this really boils down to is return to zero, and whether Joker could uh, overpower Giorno without that hurting him. And the answer, I feel, is yes, and here's why. Based on everything I read about that, it's a full undo of everything, and that's fine. That's fine. It's a, it's an undo, but that's still it's still limited by certain things. Not the least of which is both Giorno and the Persona. Remember, as we saw in both the, the Dio fight and uh, Jonathan Jost. Uh, sorry, no, Jonathan didn't have a stand. Uh, uh, Jotaro, sorry, Jotaro. There is true speed and ability that needs to be considered here, and. Even if we like go high level light speed, which you would which would uh, be believable because of certain other stands, including the world and Star Platinum, and Silver Chariot, and whatever. Joker's is much much higher. By by all accounts, the stats alone, especially if you max out the stats, which again can happen. Joker has the stat feet so. I gotta say this correctly. Gold star, gold. Sorry, gold star, gold star, gold star. Eyes of the hawk, ears of the wolf. Yes, I know it's a little <laughs> brain star. But anyway, um, what was I talking about? Yeah, stats. Uh, even if gold experience requiem was able to undo it, it would have to react fast enough to do so. Second, we do know that Giorno can take damage on certain levels, including to his soul. All right, at one point, with even with gold uh, experience on his side, not requiem, but gold experience. Um, his soul got swapped and put out of his body. There are certain abilities that actually drains the soul of an opponent through Joker's personas, so that is important. Another thing to consider is that Joker has personas with insta-kill abilities, and ones that actually amplify the potential of an insta-kill hitting, and that includes with Sentinel, which was able to, once again, kill a god. All right, And this is arguably the most important thing here, is that you can't just consider this as about a persona versus a stand. It's about the godly personas versus a godly stand, all right? And what I mean by this is that while personas take the names of the various gods from the, all the pantheons I talked about earlier, if you go to their descriptions, they're actually the gods. They actually say that. And this goes back to Shimigami Tensei where it's, you know even more convoluted, but they are actual gods. So Thor, Loki, Lucifer, Raphael, Michelangelo, I think Michelangelo is in there, uh, Gabriel, and more. They are the actual entities, but they are brought to life in persona form to help you. And 
Joker alone has defeated two gods that were able to both merge realities together and completely rewrite reality, which is what Giorno does. So that would be uh, a big thing on his behalf. Second, even if, if they could do the whole undo thing, you could argue that that wouldn't really matter because what's Giorno going to do to Joker? Because as I noted, Joker has certain personas that can have reflect physical, which means all all physical damage is just immediately wiped out. And what's one of Giorno's best attacks with a gold experience? His punches, which he uses to lethal effect many times over. But that's kind of hard to do if it's just... Uh, <laughs> if it's immediately reflected. And you could say, wait, wouldn't that be a, a return by zero? Technically, no, because there are, uh, that's not a technically an ability. First of all, you have to re recognize that it is an ability and it's not something that is automatic. Like it, again, think of the gun firing, all right? Joker is not saying, hey, Persona, use reflect physical. It's an inherent part of their ability. So there's not something to actually return to zero because it's inherent. And that's, an, again, a key thing here. So, and then you think of magic, which is the same thing. It, it would reflect all that. So reflect physical, reflect magic. How the heck is he supposed to hit him? And a, a key thing that I didn't say, but I know most of you Persona fans know, is that uh, Joker can swap Personas like that. It's literally that quick. It's like, oh, I summon Lucifer. I summon, you know, Thor. I summon Odin. I summon Cthulhu, you know, and I and, uh, and then eventually Satanael, which is the ultimate persona for him the the true evolved form of our son and, and yes i know all oh, those just in one fight but again he killed god <laughs> he killed god with one bullet so while jarna will absolutely put up a fight and his you know he's got some very broken hacks what it really comes down to is can he kill joker i don't think he can and can joker get past uh, gold experience requiem with his return to zero and i think that he can and there, that doesn't even talk about Almighty, which is an attack that's specifically stated to bypass all resistances, all right? And he has multiple personas, which can use things like uh, Megiodon and stuff like that. I know I mispronounced that too. But that's an attack that specifically bypasses all resistances. It does not have an element. It is divine attack. It is a divine energy that destroys opponents. And he has multiple of that. And that doesn't even talk about the items and more that he can use to heal himself on the regular or buff, buff, buff himself on, on the regular to make him even more powerful. So in the end, while Jorno is strong, he definitely will not see this coming. I know I already made that joke. But, uh, and Joker, a.k.a. Ren, a.k.a. Akira, will win. I pray. <laughs> I don't want to go 0-2. I don't want to go 0-2. And, and with that, I'm ending this episode of Tata. Who do you think is going to win between Joker and Giorno? Let me know and uh, let me know in comments below alongside how you think the battle's gonna go. What do you think the track name is going to be? I think that's, that's gonna be fun. What do you think the final blow will be? Will it be Santanael or will it be something else entirely? Or if you think Giorno does win, how do you think he's gonna pull it off? Let me know below. So I thank you for watching. You may as far I know you were listening, and I'll see you around.